What is up, you guys? Teller, checking in for the prop edition of UFC Vegas 89. And I'm feeling good. For those of you guys that didn't know, I was under the weather for about two weeks. Uh, About two weeks uh, to date, uh, it it took me to start feeling like myself. All right, guys? So I'm happy. We got March Madness picking up. We got another UFC event to talk about here, UFC Vegas 89. Uh, We got Atlantic City taking place next weekend. Uh, We got UFC 300 on the horizon. Things are good, all right? I'm feeling really good. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to everybody that sent me well wishes. It's highly appreciated. You guys know I got a lot of love for all you guys out there. Thanks for uh, tuning in here. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, especially if you guys like new kinds of content coming your way. If you like these prop videos, make sure you're liking this video so I know after this event, we're trying to look like uh, Big Papa Frank over here, all right? We're trying to hit on some nice plus money action, okay? That's what this video is about. We're going to be talking about plus money action, underdog type value. And if you guys stick around to the end of this video, I'm going to give you guys a play that you might want to target. It could possibly hit. Uh, And I'm talking about a play that's as high as a plus 14,000. Okay. And if for those of you guys that feel that that's too steep, we'll talk about moving a couple of those legs around and making it maybe a little bit more realistic. Uh, But I'm going to be talking about parlaying some of these props and some of these a specific method of victories where we're really putting together some big type plus value. And we're talking about hitting those, those lotto type tickets, throwing some big money on, uh, putting all your chips on one number, cashing on the roulette wheel um, or, or on the craps table, whatever you may call it. For some reason, doing these videos makes me feel like I'm, I'm in the casino and we're targeting uh, some big type of bets. Because when I'm in the casino, I like to target those kind of bets. Uh, you won't catch me in the slot machines, I'll tell you that, but... Uh, you will definitely catch me on the roulette tables, the crap tables and stuff like that. So uh, shout out to my boy, Big Papa Frank, uh, for letting me uh, use this picture of him. This was actually uh, his uh, his engagement uh, party. This was his fourth uh, marriage that he was involved with. Uh, the first three fell apart. Uh, this one, without a doubt, is going to be the one. This, this this girl here is a keeper. So uh, shout out to you, Frank. This one's going to work. I, I trust in you, buddy. All right. So, um. We're going to start at the bottom of this card. That's how we're doing it. Now, the first fight that I want to circle back to taking place in the flyweight division. I'm very excited for this matchup. As you guys know uh, from my full card prediction video, Igor Severino, just 20 years old, maybe the best 20 year old mixed martial artist in the world. Uh, I mean, he's a talented kid uh, already in the UFC. We got, he's taking on Andre Lima, 25 years old, who's also making his UFC debut. Uh, Both fighters coming off phenomenal performances on Dana White's uh, contender series. Now, As I take a look at this fight, we understand that neither of these fighters have ever been finished because they've never taken a loss, Uh, but we do understand that both of these fighters are straight up fight finishers, okay? And I know Andre Lima didn't get the finish in his fight on Dana White's contender series, but you guys have to remember, uh, it wasn't really due to to his effort, uh, in a sense, because uh, Rickson Zenedim was on the back foot, backpedaling, and essentially running away that entire fight, man. Uh, so it, it really was hard for Andre Lima to deliver a finish there in that spot. And I think that these two fighters are really going to cr- gonna clash. I, I really do. Um, and that's why as we, uh, we look at some of the available prop bets here, um, you know, something that I, that I kind of like is the under one and a half rounds, uh, which you can catch right around plus 145. You see it here at plus 140 of my bookie, but plenty of other sports books have this right now, plus 145. Um, I think that both these fighters are going to clash from the get-go. Uh, Severino is a very aggressive fighter. Uh, so you know he, now we're going to be able to see Lima get that dance partner that's going to meet him in the middle of the cage. And both of these dudes are very dangerous strikers. I favor Lima getting the knockout in this fight. That's also something maybe you want to target. Uh, now, let's see what we can pull up uh, for a Lima uh, knockout, which you can catch... Uh, we see it here on Bet Online at plus two twenty five. Maybe that's something you want to keep an eye on. I think Lima has the more refined striking, and I've seen Severino crack a little bit on the feet. We talked about that. Um, so my most favorable uh, scenario is uh, is Lima getting that knockout, but understand that Severino is a fight finisher as well, and we still need to learn a lot more about about Lima and maybe as far as his ground game and stuff like that. Maybe Severino gets his fight down to the mat, gets a sub. Maybe they clash. Maybe Severino clips Lima. Let's also mention that Lima has been knocked out in his own right over in the kickboxing world too. So, uh, you know, keep an eye uh, on those types of props for that fight. That's kind of what I'm sensing uh, as far as uh, 
that fight goes as far as any type of value. Let's slide up the card here a little bit. I want to talk about a fight that's taking place in the featherweight division between Ricardo Ramos and Julian Erosa. Now, if you guys remember, my prediction for this fight is Ricardo Ramos is going to get the job done, and I think that he's going to find the mark here. Uh, Julian Erosa, let's talk about this real quick. Julian Erosa is 34 years old, turning 35 in a couple of months. Okay, he take a look at his last uh, his last losses that he's taken right throughout the years. Okay. He's been finished in his last two fights, first and foremost, okay? Finished by Fernando Padilla, caught early in that fight. Finished by Bruce Leroy, caught, uh, finished early in that fight. Now, it did have a couple victories. We know he's a dangerous fighter as well. Uh, he's a well-rounded fighter, but I think that he's on uh, the downslope. But now we're going to go back to his third loss, all right, against Sangwoo Choi. Was knocked out in the first round in that fight, okay? Uh, knocked out in the third round by Julio Arce. He did go to a decision with Grant Dawson. It was a decent fight for him. But look, go to the fight before that. Knocked out in the first round against Devontae Smith. Okay, knocked out in the first round. This was outside the UFC over in Cage Sport by Bobby McIntyre. Knocked out in the first round there. Okay, uh, did go to a decision against Patty Pimblett and Cage Warriors. Uh, but before that, uh, knocked out by Teruto Ishihara. If you guys remember him, the, the team alpha male flop. Uh, funny guy, but... Uh, and then, you guys know I'm not going to... Forget to mention the fact that he was knocked out by Artem Lobov, the GOAT uh, that was on the Ultimate Fighter. Okay, are you guys catching on here? I mean, uh, Julian Arosa, I'm a big fan of his fighting style. I like watching him fight. Uh, but now he's even older, obviously, than he's ever been before. He's taken more damage than he's ever taken before. And he has a long track record of being knocked out. Ricardo Ramos is a tricky striker. I think that Ramos is going to catch him in this fight. So uh, let's go take a look at what we could find here. Um, and you could also target unders in this fight, depending, let's see what kind of value we can get there because we know Julian Arosa is a, a little bit of a fight finisher as well. If, if he happens to, uh, get the job done, but let me be clear. I'm on the Ramos side. Uh, first and foremost, Ramos to win this fight via TKO slash KO. You can catch that uh, right around plus 250. Okay. Even as high as plus 275, uh, over on, on Unibet. I don't think a lot of people are using Unibet, but uh, you know, look at DraftKings. He's at plus 250. I think there's a little bit of value there. I think that's it's most likely that Ramos is going to get the job done via KO. Uh, maybe he clubs and subs him, but realistically, I just see him getting that knockout. Erosa has been getting knocked out. You, you don't see him getting hurt and even subbed. I mean, when he gets finished, he is getting knocked out. And I think that there's some potential value in a plus 250 line there. Um Ramos to win inside the distance is a plus 140. Like I said, I think you're better off just taking the extra value and going for the knockout. Um, but let's see, as far as the fight uh, going under, under one and a half rounds, is at plus 125 right now. Now, if you want to play it a little safer, you could go that route. Again, I'll just mention the fact that Julian Arosa is, is a, a fighter that sometimes rises to the occasion and gets his own finishes inside the cage. Uh, but I'm liking the under in this fight. I'm liking this fight not to go the distance. See what type type of lines you can get on these fights. Um, but realistically, I think you're better off just getting getting the value instead of targeting like a fight. Uh, the fight ends inside the distance here. You know, uh, on DraftKings at minus 225, there's just no value there. Don't be targeting uh, bets like that. Don't play it too safe. You need to get the plus sign next to your bet in this fight. And I think that you kind of want to entangle Ramos getting the job done and being the victor in the fight. So that's kind of what I'm sensing uh, in regards to that fight there. That's something to keep an eye on. Let's bump up to the lightweight division and talk about Kurt Halaba and Trey Ogin. Uh, two fighters uh, in their, their mid-30s, uh, but two fighters that have actually been looking uh, better than ever as of recently, right? Kurt Halaba, we talked about how he had that initial stint in the UFC, left the UFC, worked his way into the ultimate fighter, and has been looking amazing, really. If you want to be honest, he's been looking amazing all throughout the show. He's been finishing these dudes that he's been in there with. Submitted Connor's boy, Lee Hammond, knocked out Jason Knight, submitted Austin Hubert uh, on the ultimate fighter. Uh, uh, that was on the undercard of that Sterling O'Malley uh, fight card, UFC 292. I really think that he's just been uh, hitting on all cylinders right now. I think that he's taken the game as serious as he ever has. He's still in good shape, and he has all that fight experience. Um you know, on the other hand, Trey's looked pretty good as well. You know, that, if you remember the fight he had against Nicholas Mota, that was a fight that the that he should have had to finish inside. The, the referee kind of messed up there, but he was on his way to finishing that fight. His striking was looking better. I still have not forgotten some of the, the performances that he's had early on in his career. And the ones I want to bring up, again, is the fact that he was submitted by Nick Brown and submitted by Thomas Gifford 
uh, two times in the first round. I'm not that high on Thomas Gifford. You guys know that. We talked about how I've seen him fight and whatnot, seen him live, and uh, he was a UFC flop. You know, he made his way to the octagon and was uh, quickly, um, you know, escorted out out the cage there. But you know, I, I haven't forgot that. And even though Trey is a fighter that has his own grappling skills, he is a a dangerous uh, s- submission artist. Man, this is a guy that submitted. Uh, 10 of his uh, 16 victories submitted 10 of the opponents there, but he's a guy that's been submitted himself in half of his losses. Okay. Uh, Kurt Halaba is a fighter that has been getting finishes in the cage. And I think that he might be live here to, to get a finish uh, eight subs of almost half of his victories come by way of sub. Uh, he also get, gets the knockouts as well. He has a diverse amount of finishes, but he's a fight finisher. Okay. There's no question about that. 16 of his 20 finishes have come by way of finish. That's what Kurt's going to be looking to do in there. He pushes the pace. He looks to break his opponents. Uh, let, let's see what, what what's next to Kurt's name over here. And and remember, Kurt Halaba is the underdog straight up in this fight. I know some of you guys might might not like where I'm going with this, but as far as uh, f- from a, a value standpoint, analyzing this fight, I kind of like looking at Halaba to win inside the distance at plus 195. Maybe some slight value there, but uh, let's see what Halaba is to pull off the sub. Uh, I want to talk about that here. Uh, Halaba to win via submission. You can catch this right now as high as plus 500. I think that's a line that you should be keeping an eye on. Uh, plus 500 on DraftKings right now. I think the most likely scenario is Halaba gets that that sub. Uh, Trey, you take a look at his six losses. He's never been knocked out. He's a durable dude. If Halaba is able to get him out of there, I think that he finds that sub. Maybe gets on his back and, and pulls something off there. Um, even if Halaba has some success with his striking, pushing the pace, I think eventually he just would break Trey down and then set up that sub. So keep an eye on that plus 500 sub line next to Kurt Holaba's name there. To the six fight main card, uh, we'll talk about three fights here as far as eyeing some props. First and foremost, Peyton Talbot taking on Cameron Simon, two very talented young fighters. I think a lot of people are expecting to see a lot of action in this fight, uh, as am I. Uh, but one thing that you guys do need to take note is, is that both of these fighters have never been finished. I know it's still early on in both their their careers, uh, but I have a feeling this fight is going to push towards a a decision um, if I had to put my finger on it. Uh, You guys know I am on the Talbot side and I know he is a fight finisher, uh, but maybe maybe there's some potential value on Talbot to win this fight by decision. I see it on my bookie at plus 160, but you can you can actually shop this line right now. I've seen it as high as plus 200. Uh, Bet online is offering it right now plus 200. It, it was just plus 220 not too long ago. I think there's some potential value there. I kind of favor Talbot getting a decision victory. Uh, again, I do understand he's a fight finisher, but maybe Cameron has some moments in this fight and uh, uh, he pushes this fight to the later rounds. Eventually, do, though, I do think that Talbot's going to push the pace on Simon. And I think he will have his moments that will be um, the, 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 the most... Uh, significant points of the fight, edging him in the fight, giving him that decision. Uh, but keep an eye on that for some potential value. We got Edmund Shabazi and taking on AJ Dobson. AJ Dobson, uh, a fighter that has never been finished. You could tell when you watch him in there. He's a very durable fighter. He's not an easy easy guy to get out of there. Uh, I know just 10 pro fights, but still, you could tell when you watch him. He passes the eye test. Uh, he might be a little bit of a step behind some of his opposition at times, but he's a durable dude. And I do expect Edmund Shabazzian to be a step ahead of him uh, technically uh, and also just with his speed and whatnot. I think Edmund's starting to really hit on all cylinders. And Edmund's, uh, you know, if you take a look at some of Edmund's wins, besides the fact that he's been getting finished, um, that that's one thing you do have to watch out for. Uh, you'll you'll see why in a second for where I'm, where I'm targeting in this fight, because uh, he has been being finished. Uh, and even in his last victory, he had a finish in his own right. Uh, he had a finish actually in the last four victories that he's had. He's been a fight finisher, but guess what, man? I'm going to go against the grain here, and that's how we're actually going to get a little bit of better value. I'm going to say that there's some potential value on Edmund Shabazian uh, to win this fight via decision, which you can act- actually grab as high as plus 300 on DraftKings right now. And you see it on some other sports books, sports book around plus 265. We've seen some action coming in on that. Uh, the reason why I think there's some value there is that I think Dobson's going to be durable enough to not be finished by Shabazian. And I think Shabazian's going to be the fighter that, that prevails here. I think, like I said, with his speed, just his overall uh, tech, technical skills, I think he'll be a little bit of a step ahead of Dobson. And 
Uh, I just don't think he's going to be able to get Dobson out of there. So there's some there's some value there, in my opinion, especially at a plus 300 line. Uh, if you guys are looking to target that fight, that, that might be a specific prop that you want to target there. And uh, Edmund Shabazian, just 26 years old, uh, he he needs to get the ball rolling here. He's been taking some L's, but remember, those L's that he was taking and he was finishing those fights, it was all against high-level competition. Not so sure AJ Dobson's high-level competition there. You guys, don't forget, if you want to work with me for my official plays, the plays that I am targeting for UFC Vegas 89, shoot me an email or DM me on Instagram or Twitter. It's all scrolling below. If you want the bets that I am targeting, the ones that I feel comfortable with, the ones that I feel that we're going to go attack and bring some profits back, reach out to me and we can work together. All right, guys. And then we are going to talk about the main event here. Where do we see some value uh, in regards to this main event? Uh, something that, that stands out to me uh, right off the rip is Rose Namajunas to win this fight via TKO slash KO. Uh, you can catch it right now, uh, right around plus 155 uh, plus money odds. Rose Namajunas, we know she's a sniper. How could we ever forget the, the head kick that she landed on Wei Li Zhang? Amanda Rebus is a fighter that I've specifically faded to lose her fight via knockout slash TKO. If you guys remember that Macy Barber fight, Amanda Rebus is so tough. She marches forward. I love her fighting style, uh, but she is lacking very much so uh, defensively as far as her striking goes. All right. She, remember, she was a grappling first fighter with her BJJ background, but her striking has came around, but she still is there to be hit. And we've seen her knocked out uh, a couple times, right? We, we've seen her knocked out a couple times. Uh, was it Marina Rodriguez that knocked her out? Macy Barber and Rose Namajunas is a sniper. Be careful, maybe if you're Rebus, you need to be careful. Maybe that that head kick of Rose sneaks up there and baseball bats her and puts her out. All right, so plus one fifty five. I think there's a decent enough value there to to be targeting that. Um, if you want to take a look, uh, Rose via submission. Uh, Rose Namajunas uh, via submission right now. Uh, you, I mean, some of these books, it's it's pretty crazy, right? Uh, Excuse me, I got the parlay button on, but if you guys can see that, uh, well, if you par you can't parlay those two together, can you? Because you can't get a knockout and a TKO. So let me let me get this parlay button off, because uh, as you guys know, I want to sh show you guys a fat belly parlay here in a second. Uh, but what I want to talk about now is if you were to target Rose Namajunas to win this fight via submission, uh, which where is it? Oh, yeah. There it is. Uh, you can catch it as high as plus fifteen hundred on Bet Rivers. I think. There's some value there for some of you guys that are looking for that crazy value because if Rose hurts Rebus, we understand that she can club and sub her, go down to the mat, and maybe sink up a choke, okay? There is that type of possibility. I know Rebus is a high-level grappler, but if she is messed up, if she's on Queer Street, she could easily be, be finished there uh, via submission. Rose has some nasty sub skills as well. So I don't know. Keep an eye on that, but I, I do like the knockout prop much better. I think that's the more realistic uh, possibility. And uh, as far as how, how late this fight goes, um, under uh, three and a half rounds, you can catch almost at, at even odds at pick them odds. I, I like the minus three and a half under the minus three and a half rounds. I think that gives Rose a significant amount of time to get that finish if she's going to get it. I mean, once you get uh, past the three and a half mark there, uh, you know, once you're in the fourth round, I mean, if she didn't get that finish up until that time, um, I mean, is she going to get the finish? But um, you know, right around even odds. Maybe keep an eye on that as well. For those of you guys that were looking for that big ticket, how about this? We got a plus 45,000 put together here. Uh, we'll, we'll take one of these legs out uh, in a second. We'll, we'll kind of mess with the numbers. But how about this? Nama Yunus to win via TKO slash KO. Halaba to win via submission. Shabazian to win via decision. Ramos to get that knockout. And under two and a half rounds on the Andre Lima versus Igor De Silva fight. You can catch that all together at plus 45, almost plus 46,000. Okay, so for those of you guys that need that big ticket win, need to uh, need to get a boat for the summer, right? Summertime is creeping up on us. Maybe you lock that in together. Um, you know, if you if you want to subtract the, uh, the uh, let's see here one second. If we want to subtract the under uh, of the two and a half rounds, uh, maybe you want to aim just for a little four team parlay. Uh, that's plus 24,000, essentially plus 25,000. Just uh, a good, maybe if you want to slide that, that Lima versus Severino uh, under out of there. And uh, maybe you look at these. These are ones that we all talked about here together. Plus 25,000. Excuse me, if I said that correctly the first time, but plus 25,000, you can catch on that four team parlay. Get yourself a nice little 24 footer. 
uh, you know, get ready to go hit the waves this summer. You guys need to get up off the couch, go enjoy yourself. All right. And I'm going to hit you guys up with some parting words. How do you guys like that? I'm slipping in the parting words right in as we're talking some betting action. You guys, spring has sprung. Stop sitting inside. It's okay when you want to cool down a little bit in the AC and watch some fights and whatnot. You guys know that's what we live to do. But then get outside, enjoy the sun, and go, go hit the beach up, go hit your lake up, go hit the pool up, whatever you guys, whatever kind of water you have around you. Uh, get some nice cold ones, whatever you, what kind of cold drinks you like. If you don't like alcohol, get yourself some, some cold water, some cold lemonades, whatever you guys like out there. All right. And if you like that hot stuff, burn it up. If you, if you like some nice sticky icky, whatever you got to do. Feel good all summer and enjoy yourself. All right, guys. Hopefully, we're, we're going to cash on some of these prop bets. As I said, you guys can expect this pretty much for every card, uh, but specifically for the big ones for sure. And we're going to be like my boy. Uh, again, shout out to my boy over here, Big Papa Frank, again. All right. This this is the fourth time he just got married within the last eight years. This is going to be the one. I'm telling you, man. Uh, Linda here. Linda is a keeper. All right. You see, she's very happy as as they were hitting. That was over in Vegas. Um uh, for their honeymoon not too long ago. And uh, I was actually right over here in the corner. Uh, you see my boy, uh, Urkel. It's my boy Urkel over here. Great dude. He's actually been hitting some nice bets as of recently also. And uh, unfortunately, they cut me out of this picture. But all right, guys, on that note. Uh -huh. Welcome to the show. This is the MMA fortune teller. Yeah. The MMA fortune MMA. teller. Fortune the teller. The teller. The teller. The teller.